Well, hello, and happy Sunday to you. Hope you are all doing well. Uh, coming to you again, uh, just trying to deliver a word of encouragement to you, and uh, letting you know that we love you, bringing a word to you from uh, the Bible today, and, and, and just hoping that uh, this video finds you well, and uh, doing all that you can to serve the Lord with your whole heart. I just wanted to let you know, for those of you who have been uh, praying for me, uh, had a procedure this week um, that I'd had scheduled, that of course it had gotten canceled, and uh, but this week as they begin to open a few things up and uh, things are beginning to uh, kind of get back on track and head back in the right direction again, uh, they called, rescheduled that uh, minor procedure there for me this week, so I went in on Thursday, uh, had that done, of course, I uh, had to have uh, a COVID-19 test done prior to that, and uh, thankfully uh, that test came back and I tested uh, negative uh, for that virus and very thankful for that. So I was able to go in, have the procedure, everything went off uh, without uh, any problems. Uh, God kept his hand on me, blessed all of those that uh, took part in that, and we're just so thankful uh, that that all went well and everything turned out. So thank you so much for your prayers. And thank you uh, for all of the calls and the well wishes that we received. Appreciate it so, so much. And, uh, you know, we've been telling you over and over again, and we'll continue uh, to say that, you know, and just let you know how much we do appreciate your thoughts, your prayers, how that you've been taking care of us, watching over us, and, and providing for us. And we just can't thank you enough, but we just do continue to pray God's richest blessings upon you. So I want to bring a word to you here uh, today for just a few moments. Um, I apologize for the lateness. Uh, just been a very hectic week, um, actually for the first time in about, well, I guess since Christmas, um, got to see our uh, oldest son and his family were able to come in uh, for just a few days and, and, and have a brief visit with them. So we just appreciated getting some time there with our family this week. So, uh, of course, when there are kids in the house, um, you know, that just changes everything, when, especially when you get used to living a certain way. Uh, but we were just so glad uh, to spend some time with them. Of course, had that procedure this week and just so many different things going on. Uh, so it just takes us a couple of days, you know, to kind of get back on track and get back into the swing of things. And uh, so, um, again, I do apologize. Uh, I didn't have this video out earlier today. Um, but, hey, uh, we've all learned uh, sometimes uh change isn't quite as bad as we think. We get used to certain things, we want things a certain way, and we are definitely creatures of habit. But every once in a while, uh, we learn to change things up just a little bit, and uh, we've come to find out that uh, change, although sometimes we don't like it, it, it won't kill us. Uh, so we just learn to adapt, overcome, and move on. And we certainly have been learning more and more how to do that. So just want to share with you some scriptures here and uh, take time to go ahead and write them down or just, you know, rewind the video. Um, I've been told many times, you know, when we do get back together, um, things are definitely going to change, um, you know, and I I'm kind of have these thought patterns and uh, I've been uh, kind of just envisioning what's going to wind up happening um, you know, our first Sunday back in service, when I get up to deliver the Sunday sermon, you know, five, ten minutes in, I'm going to have people, you know, going like this to me and trying to hit the pause button so they can, uh, you know, walk away or maybe fast forward through to the end or, you know, whatever it is, because they're kind of getting used to listening to me in that form and in that fashion. So, you know, they just skip over the parts that they don't want, or if I get to running too close to when I should be done, um, you know, for my brother-in-law, Charlie there, you know, he can just kind of fast forward to the end and uh, get to the amen and then he's all done. So, um, and I know Charlie wouldn't, uh, wouldn't mind me, uh, putting that out there for him. You know, we're, uh, we're good friends and, and we tease back and forth all the time. So we, we give, uh, each other a hard time about that, but, uh, he's, he's a, he's a great guy and, uh, we, we love him a lot and, uh, he, he, he holds me accountable and keeps me on that straight and narrow. So, but uh, I'm just, you know, waiting for that first day on that first Sunday to see who actually it is that goes like this first. And uh, of course, they'll probably all be doing it now that uh, they've heard me say it. So, but uh, allow me to share these scriptures. And as I said, you either write them down or just rewind, you know, do whatever you got to do. But um, I just, I just want to, you know, speak to us for just a few minutes today and, and what God's brought to my mind and what
what God has laid on my heart is that it all starts with a thought. It all starts with a thought. And uh, I'm going to be sharing uh, from some scripture uh, text out of uh, Psalms 139, Psalms 139, Isaiah 55, Matthew 9, verse 4, Psalms 92, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Romans chapter 12, uh, Proverbs chapter 21, Philippians chapter 4, and also Proverbs chapter 23. I'll go over those one more time. Some of them I give you verses for. Some of them I don't give you verses for because I want you just to get in there and I want you to read it. I want you to catch the whole thing. And, and then when you finally do get to the reference that I've used, you know, it'll kind of jump out at you. And you say, oh, yeah, okay, I, I see what the pastor was saying there now. So it's Psalms 139, Isaiah 55, Matthew 9, verse 4, Psalms 92, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Romans chapter 12, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 2, Philippians 4 and 8, and Proverbs 23 and 7. And what I want to bring to you today is just this, this idea, um, you know, of how many times that the Bible speaks to us about our thoughts and how important it is for us to get our thoughts in the right place and in the right direction because what a lot of people don't really stop to realize what they don't really stop to think about because a lot of times we as human beings when we you know contemplate you know thinking and when we contemplate the thought process we immediately think we're dealing with our head we immediately think that it's something that crosses our mind and it's something that we think with our head but you know, a lot of times in the Bible, when the Bible talks about our thoughts and the Bible talks about what we think and, you know, how we feel about certain things, the Bible is not talking about these, you know, casual, uh, you know, thoughts that just cross our mind. The Bible, when it begins to speak about our thoughts and how we think and controlling, you know, our thoughts and controlling how we think, the Bible tells us to take every thought into captivity. And I know a lot of people look at that and they think, uh, Pastor, that makes no sense to me. I don't. How am I supposed to control what I think? Well, one of the first things that we have to understand is a lot of times we know the Bible talks about our thoughts and what we think. It's not always just talking about the things that come into our head. The Bible talks about you know as we think in our heart, and and some people just don't really have never stopped to think about that. They don't realize that we can literally think with our heart. And thinking with our heart is something that's down inside of our core. It's not just something that crosses our mind. That's why the Bible says so many times that even God has thoughts. You know, it talks about God's thoughts and how his thoughts are so far above our thoughts. And, but I, I got news for you. God does not have passing thoughts. When God thinks something, guess what? It becomes reality. And it's because, you know, when God thinks, God thinks in his heart. God, it, he thinks from his core and he thinks it and it becomes reality. And because we are created in the image of God, we too can possess that same type of a thing. You know, it's not just something that we think about momentarily and not just a thought that crosses our mind. The Bible says when you allow your thoughts to begin to come from your heart and things that are down deep inside of you, it will actually change some circumstances. The Bible says it can actually change you. It's why the Bible says, you know, sometimes a lot of people can put on airs. You know, you'll be talking to somebody, you'll be you'll be doing something with somebody and they're putting on this air, but in their heart, they feel completely different than what they're actually allowing you. And and what you're seeing and what they're showing you is completely different. Why? Because of the way they think in their heart. The Bible says as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So, you know, we can be religious as we want to be. We can put on airs and we can be everything that we think that we're supposed to be. But the Bible says in those scriptures that I gave you, it says God knows your heart. God knows how you really feel in your heart. And that's one of the things that we need to learn to take captive. And that's why the Bible tells us to take captive 
every thought and imagination, not just the things that cross our mind. It says, no, what's really down deep inside? What do you think in your heart? Those are the things that the Spirit of God wants us to help us take captive. And he says, what's really down deep inside of you, what you really think down deep in your heart, that's what makes you who you are. And you know that that same process will help us even when we're dealing with situations like we are dealing with today. You know, it, I mean, we're all going through this. We're all experiencing the same thing. We're all experiencing this virus. We're all facing this pandemic across the world, not just here in the States, but even over in, in India and, and, and other places all around the world. You know, everybody is facing this, but guess what? We're all facing it a little bit different and it's having a different type of effect on everyone. Why is that? I can tell you why it is. Because as individuals, we all think about it differently. You can be depressed if you want to be depressed. You can be upset because things don't go your way. You can, you can convince yourself that I don't need to worry about this. I'm immune. It's not going to affect me. I'm not contagious. I don't need to. You, you can think whatever you want to think, you know, and you can think either in a positive way or you can think in a negative way. Personally, for me, I've been asking the Lord to help me look for all of the good things. Look for all of the positive things. Am I enjoying this? No, absolutely not. Do I enjoy, you know, being away from church? Some people may think, hey, we may never go back. You know, pastor's probably enjoying this. Pastors probably enjoy taking time to sit down in front of a video camera for a few minutes a week. He's still getting paid. He's still doing whatever, and he don't have to be out at church. I got news for you. That is not true. I do not enjoy being away from church. I do not enjoy going out there several times a week and gathering with people and, and us getting together and doing what it is that we do. I, I, I miss that. I really, really miss that. So I'm not enjoying being at home. I'm not enjoying, you know, all of the things that we're doing and having to change. And, you know, it, it's no fun for me. I'm sure it's no fun for you, but I refuse. I refuse to allow it to change the way I think, and I don't mean the way I think up here, I mean the way I think here. I simply refuse to allow it to change how I think, how I think about others, how I think about God, how I think about life, and how I, you know, just approach everything, you know, in my life. I'm, I'm not going to let it change me. I, I am bound and determined, you know, I am just going to continue to concentrate on living my life the best I know how for God. Helping everyone I can help, looking for opportunities to, to be the person God has called me to be. That's what it's all about. And, we, and, and how do we do that? You know, when we sit back and we begin to look at ourselves and we think, man, oh man, my life is not turning out the way I want it. You know, things just aren't going the way I really thought they would go. Well, maybe, just maybe, what needs to happen is we need to start thinking about things a little differently. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. So if you need to change some things in your life, if you need to change some things about you, it all starts with a thought. And God says, when you find some things that are lovely and pure, praiseworthy, he says, think on those things. And what he's, what he's saying is, he's not saying just to sit around and ponder, you know, and be like the scarecrow in the Wizard of Oz when he finally got his diploma and he became a great thinker. That's not what this is about. What this is about is, changing the thoughts that are in here. God, change what I think about me in here. Change what I think about others in here. Change, God, how I think about you in here. Do I think he is a great God? Absolutely. Do I, do I think he was a great God two months ago, three months ago? Yes, he was a great God, and I thought so in my heart. 
How do I feel about God? What do I think about God today? I think and feel exactly the same way. He is still a great God. He is still on the throne. That's what I think in here. And because I think that, it makes me act a certain way. It causes me to do certain things because of how I think. And that's my word for you today. That's my encouragement for you today. If you're struggling and if you're, you know, trying to, to get past, the, you know, the chaos of it all and trying to figure out this new normal that we all are referring to and trying to figure out, you know, God, you know, how am I going to change my life? How, how things just aren't going the way they're, you know, supposed to be going, God. How do I make a difference? How am I going to get out of this funk? How am I going to, you know, change where I'm at and what I'm doing and how things are going? Well, what you may have to do is just begin to start looking to God and asking God to change your thoughts. And as we do that, we can begin to face some of these things and we can begin to allow those new thoughts to produce something brand new within us. And it won't be long, I promise you, when you begin to allow those thoughts to get inside of you, it will not be long before some of those thoughts begin to be expressed outwardly and you will actually see some changes. You'll begin to look at things differently. You'll begin to have some different ideas and you'll begin to have some different opinions about some things. Why? Because you are allowing God to help you think differently. Not with your brain, not with your head, not with your feelings, but think differently in your heart. And that is what helps us. And, and that's what will get us where we need to be because the word declares it all starts with a thought. Let's pray. God, we love you. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for all that you do to help us. And God, I don't know about anybody else, but I think you're wonderful. I think you are a, a sovereign, all-loving, all-knowing, all-caring God. That's what I think. And that's how I live my life because, because I think it, God. I think it to the point that I know it. And I pray that those thoughts, those same thoughts, God will begin to permeate some of those who are listening to me today, those who might be struggling and those who are not happy with the way their life is going. Those who are struggling with their current circumstance and those who are struggling, God, with some of the things that are going on in their life right now because things aren't going the way they'd planned. You know, some of the stuff, God, that they'd put their trust in and some of the things that they thought were just going to be there, you know, their job or their paycheck or whatever it else is, God, we just took for granted and we just, you know, really didn't think about it because we just thought it would always be there. And now, Lord, the word declares that sometimes those things, I believe it was Proverbs, God, your word in Proverbs says some of those things we thought were going to be there, your word says they're going to take wings and they just fly away. So those things we were counting on, those things we thought would be there forever are just gone. That's why your word declares that we should take our thoughts captive and begin to think about you because your thoughts are above our thoughts. Your ways are above our ways. So that's what we want to begin to focus on, God. Help us to begin to think like you think. Things that are permanent, things that are not going to change. Things like the love of God. That's never going to change. Your love for us, God, is never going to change. And that's what I want to think about. That's what I want to put my trust in. That's what I want to put my hope in. And that's what I want to count on from day to day is the love of God that is in my life and in my heart through my thoughts. And when that happens, God, I know you will allow me to have that expressed outwardly. So help us, God, as we take our thoughts captive and we begin to concentrate on you. That's what we desire, God, and that is what we need. And because of it, Lord, it will help us to think our way through 
to a more positive life and be all, God, that you have planned for us because that's why your word declares in Jeremiah, he says, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. Your thoughts concerning us, God, are nothing but good. Even in a challenging time, even when we are struggling and even when we are going, Lord, through a difficult, rough stretch, you still have nothing but thoughts to prosper us and help us and build character in us. At no point do you ever think about destroying us. It's all about helping us, and we thank you for that, God. So just help us to dwell on those things and allow those thoughts to live and dwell in our hearts. And it will make us what you have created us to be. And we ask these things in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Hoping that we're going to be able to get together real soon, maybe within the next couple of weeks. Uh, we'll be scheduling some gatherings there somehow at the church. Not sure how that's all going to take place and shake out. We're just going to kind of watch as, as we migrate through these phases. And, uh, you know, these red phase and yellow phase and green phase and all of these things. We're, we're just going to try and do the best we can. Look for the best advice we can to keep everybody safe. But I promise just as soon as possible, we're going to try and figure out a way uh, for us to be able to come together safely and worship together and to visit one another and just be rejoined together as a family in Christ. So until then, till I see you again, take care. Know that we love you. God bless.